Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Chloe here. We're going to be checking out what may potentially be the last episode of Forgotten Fields. I'm not quite sure. Uh, we're finally at our old house. We're packing up. We're leaving. We got to call Dewat and ask him for some new rice. So we're going to do that. No, I need to use the phone. Okay. What's his number? Call the. Oh, you just, you just, six... Is that the Watt Multi Cuisine Restaurant? I wanted to place an order for two bowls of plain rice for home delivery. Of course. What's your address? House number twelve, Gomar Road. Okay, sir. Someone will be there in twenty minutes. Great. Thanks. Thank you, sir. What? What? Can I look at that? Can I look at that menu? I just want to look at the menu. I can't. That makes me sad. Okay. Cause that food looked good. They had like paneer, and I love paneer. Should be here in twenty minutes. Great. She's making shrimps. I wonder how Dad would have felt about selling the place. Did you two ever discuss the possibility? Not really, no. We never had a reason to. He was never one to put up with the situation if it didn't make him happy. I think he'd understand my decision. It's no good being tied down because of all the memories, is it? Especially become gone now. And all my money is tied up in this house. This way I can retire with the little nest egg. She has supported me very well. Plus, the new flat is very convenient. Sometimes you just have to take your foot off firm ground to climb higher. Don't you think so? Aren't you a little stressed about it? with everything being out in the open and unpacked. Oh, I am. You have no idea. But these people, the movers, they specifically said, Madam, don't worry about packing anything. We'll do it all. Properly organized and everything. So I said, okay, if that's how they do things. I still pack my personal things, though. Aka, can you put out the plates from the cabinet, the one with the phone? Just put them out for now. We'll set up the table later. Okay. Get the Red Bulls out, too. The one with the phone, girl. The one with the phone. She said, I get it out. Get the Red Bulls. Get the Red Bulls. Get the Red Bulls. Get the Red Bulls. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Place. What do I do with the bowls? Bring them here. Keep them on the kitchen shelf on the side. Place the bowls. Can you fill up these up with the nachos next to you? I'm sorry. Nachos. Fill nachos. Done. Keep the bowls on the table. I'm placing the bowls on the table. Put the fruit bowl in the fridge. We'll need the space. Pick up the fruit bowl and put it in the fridge. What happened to that girl of yours? Aish? Aishwara, yes. Such a sweet girl. She spoke so politely when I called her up for tonight's party. Why did you not continue things with her? Because I'm an idiot. Don't talk about yourself like that. She was good for me, I know that. But you live in your lair mostly too late. You're 100% right about that, Sid. Why don't you see if she'd like to try again? She's getting married, Mom, in a few months. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, make sure you don't let the next one get away whenever that happens. You're getting older, after all. Have you met anyone recently? That's enough, Mom. I'm stressed out already. All right, all right. But think about things outside of work, too. There's more to life than just that. Yes, I know. That has to be her. Could be the food, too. Could be. Has it been 20 minutes? Has it been 20 minutes? Has it been 20 minutes? Hi! Hey, right on time. Obviously, I got cake. Hello, Aishwara. Hi, Auntie. All set for tomorrow? Oh, maybe I haven't packed anything. Oh, yeah, the packers will take care of that. No need to worry. Can I help you with anything? With chopping, maybe? Oh, no, no, no. Don't worry. I've got it. Tell me when it's chopping. I got it. Hello? Where do I have to come? Don't you have the address? I'm on some narrow road. There was a shop at the run. Oh, you're at the back. Hold on. I'm coming. Ah, this is the house. Yeah, you had to take the next turn. What the hell's going on, man? Why'd you wake me up in the middle of the night? Are, dude, I... Shh, keep it down. Mom's sleeping. Dude, I messed up. I was trying to approach Sarah in class today. I didn't know what to say, though. What? <laughs> Don't laugh, dude. I need to give it back. But how do I do that without looking like a creep? What were you thinking? What was the desired outcome? I don't know. I wasn't thinking. Anyway, I have a plan, but I need your support. I'm going over your place and I'm going to toss the book under a balcony. Wait, what? Don't question it, man. Don't question it. Just do it. I spent all day thinking about the best possible solution. It'll be like nothing ever happened. Then she'll wake up and see it tomorrow. She'll probably think she dropped it there and forgot about it. This is a shit plan. But I can't come, ma. Man, what if my mom wakes up? She's late. Come on, dude. All right, but shh, quiet. Sir? Huh? Sir, are you okay? How much? 200, sir. Here you go. Thanks. I got the rice, mom. Got the rice. Lovely, thanks. I got it. 
I gotta go get my friends, Mom. Get my friends, Mom. I'm getting stuck. Yo, yo, yo. Hey, where's AJ? No idea. It was in his place when we went to pick him up. Hello, Auntie. Hello, ma'am. Hi, Ish. Hello, so good to see you boys. Hey, you guys. Sit. Ish, join them, please. Thanks for the help. And then, then he just texted one minute. That's it? Yeah, so we called him again. He cut the call and he texts, bro. It's just AJ being AJ. Always late. <laughs> AJ, no. <laughs> Hope he's okay. Should we call his parents? Whoa, no, Mom. I think he's with Sarah. Ah, should have known. He'll be here. Should we start with the drinks? Oh, he's, so he's still with Sarah. Who he um, was with, he was into in high school. That's the girl whose book he stole. What drinks? Oh, there he is. That better be him. Hey. Hey, come on in, man. We were just talking about you. Sorry about the delay. Hello, Auntie. Sorry I'm late. That's okay. Are you fine? Yes, yes, of course. Did you guys fight? No, dude. Wait, I'll get us all drinks first. Nothing for me. Need to wake up tomorrow. Come on, Auntie. Last day. All right, Sid. A little wine? Yes, thanks. Get a little bit of Jack Daniels. <laughs> Give my mom some Jack Daniels. Every, all the uh, all the booze in the world. I'm gonna take all the booze in the world. Okay. Anyways, place it here. Oh my God! Look at me. I should be a bartender. That's my calling in life. Delicious. Cheers to memories. Of the good old days. And better days to come. Yeah. Go on, AJ. You were saying? I was saying nothing. It's all cool, man. Sarah is his girlfriend. Yes, they've been together five years now. Wow, how did it start? Uh, it was hilarious. AJ turns up at Sid's place in the middle of the night. Well, oh? And he's like, I stole Sarah's book in class. I don't know what to do. His grand plan was to sneak outside her house and toss it onto her balcony. Oh, my. But first he needed Sid for support, so he asked him to sneak out with him. Well, I guess we're just going to reveal everything, aren't we? And then... Well, they got to her place. AJ took aim and tossed the book. But as soon as he did that, her dad stepped out from the other balcony. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but then... And he said, what are you doing tossing books in the middle of the night? And have you ever heard of something called the front door? I love this part. That brought the whole neighborhood out. Sarah stepped out on her balcony, confused to see her book lying on the floor. Her mom and her sister came out as well, but her dad's cool. Once he knew they were friends, he invited AJ and Sid inside for a cup of tea. Turns out he couldn't sleep that night either. He was happy to chill with us for a bit. And that is what impressed Sarah? I don't know. She said she thought it was brave or something. She said it was stupid and funny. Same thing. She also said cute. I remember that. That is some adventure. I mean, that was the only time I snuck out of the house, honestly. Relax it. We've all had our adventures. Just as long as you stay safe. I need to see other chickens coming along. You kids sit and eat. Help yourself some more drinks. I'll help you, Ani. Well, I've been getting into cooking recently. Might pick up a few tricks. Oh, wow. Next, you add bitter water so it doesn't dry up. Fascinating. Hold on a 16 as long as you can. It's a great picture. You guys have so much history together. We definitely do. It's pretty all five of us never got to hang out as much as we should have. You and I ended things about the same time you started meeting Ethan again. And then you met these guys. Looks like the past few years have been really fun. Wish I'd been around for it. I'm happy for you that you met them. You have a tendency to withdraw in your own world, which is great. But I was worried that it was going to go too far after I left. I'm happy things turned out so differently from what I expected. Yeah, I definitely got lucky. Yo, what are you thinking about? Remember back when we all just met and started going out? Ethan Rowan and I would turn up at your doorstep every third day and start sweet-talking your mom to let you come with us. Auntie, how are you? We were on our way to dinner and we were wondering if Sid can come. Yep. And your mom would be like, take him, I have no issues. But you'd be the one coming up with excuses and being fussy. Sounds like me. She'd be like, take him outside, he's cooped up in his room with his books and his games all day, just bring him back safely. You almost always ignore the last one. Almost? You always had a great time when you did step out, of course. It was just like getting you past the threshold of the front door was the important part. After that, you were a different person, like a spell had been lifted. I changed, though. After the first few years, you were the one calling us up. How come? I don't know, perspective? I realized I was getting the same amount of work done anyways. I didn't want to lose out on all the time we had together. It's limited. But the last year, I mean, work hasn't been great. So I became a hermit again, made sacrifices. I don't know if that was the right thing to do. It's confusing, man. The balance. You're confusing. Can't argue with that. Sup, dude? You remember that birthday party of yours? We were maybe 10 or something? Hey, 
and it was in this garden, and we spent the whole day here, just food, drinks, and running around. I remember waking up that morning so excited for the party, and that was such a long time ago. Damn. Wasn't that the one when you and your family climbed over the back wall and surprised everyone? Yup. And your dad had baked a cake himself, a lot of cream and chocolate. And he painted on some strawberries with the icing, and we thought they were real 2D strawberries. I was just thinking I haven't been friends with anyone else that long. People move on and they change. And we stopped meeting for a while after your dad and everything. I was in my own world after that. We lost touch in our teens and a bit of college. But then that football group happened and we met these guys. It's been good. The past five to six years, it's been good. Funny I'm feeling grateful for the past years when, well, they're almost over. We're all moving on with our lives now. We'll meet whenever possible. It'll be very different, though. Yeah. Sid, can you help me by clearing the table, please? Once you're done, take the dinner plates from the counter and place them on the table. Got it. Clear in the table. I guess I gotta put it in the sink. The dishes are floating out of the sink. We don't mind. Picking up and placing the plate. I'm placing a plate. I am placing the plate. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. I'm, I'm ruining the mood. Okay, Mom, I did it. The chicken needs a little more time on the gas, but dinner's almost ready. Can't wait. Oh, hey, Rowan, you were about to tell me about your scuba classes. How was the first day? Oh, it was amazing. I think this is it, guys. This is the one. You always say that. No, this time I felt it. I've always looked at Sid and how his work is a part of him, how much it means to him, and how it fulfills him. I thought something that involves a lot of people and activity meant ma event management would do that for me. But when I dove into the ocean, swam underneath, and saw the sunlight illuminate the water, it was like nothing I'd ever seen before. It was new and familiar at the same moment, it, like it was meant for me. The whole process, riding out to the ocean on a boat, strapping up, diving out together from the boat, it was so damn peaceful, so much fun. The people I were with were also chill too. And underwater is a different story. The whole time I didn't think about anything in the future, about what career this was going to lead to or what worries I had. My brain was completely in the moment. And that was it. Being in the now, that's a different time zone, man. Damn, sounds amazing. Just try it out sometime, definitely. Exciting, dude. Hopefully this is the one you've been looking for. Hopefully it is. And even if it isn't, I don't know. We'll see. Feels perfect in the moment. Let's see where it leads. It's so good that you kids think about these things and are open to different careers and experiences. Auntie, we'd rather do anything but what's expected of us. You know how we were in school. You would never catch us studying in class. Speak for yourself. Glad it's all worked out for you. And that you like what you do. When we were young, we didn't even know you could pick and choose what suited you or follow or passion. Hobbies were left behind and we did what we had to do or what was expected of us. Auntie, but you've had an amazing career with the school. Oh, yes, I'm proud of everything I was able to do there. But who knows what I would have chosen if I had the choice. Oh, the chicken should be ready now. Sid, could you bring it here? Oh, my God. Is this biryani? Oh, my God. Is this a biryani? It's a biryani. Thank you, Aishwar. I'm going to miss your cooking, Auntie. Well, I'm only moving to an apartment. I'm not going anywhere far. You kids are still welcome anytime. Of course, it's just that I might not be here for too long. I might, but I might not. I don't really know yet. Oh, yeah, don't go anywhere, dude. Why do you need to move? What are you planning? I've been thinking about moving to a bigger city to see a faster-paced life. And I work in a busier place with more opportunities. Do not understand why anyone would want that. Well, I just want to try it out. Get a new perspective on things. I don't want to have a single view on life. That's why I was way of looking at it. And you can always return if things don't work out, you know? That never happens. Well, then that would mean I made the right decision. Anyways, I've not decided yet. The part that excites me also scares me. Where the pace of life there swallows me up and they don't get time to paint and stuff. Call it an experiment, maybe. I think it could be worth a shot. If you don't try it now, it may keep bothering you. And then years later, you'll end up trying it out anyway, just to get rid of the feeling of doubt. I guess everyone's moving on, aren't they? Aisha's getting married and moving abroad. Ethan's gonna move away. Rowan's gonna get into his diving stuff and that's gonna mean he'll move too. There aren't as many opportunities here. And Sid, it's like he isn't here even when he's here. Hey! He has a good point, though. We're not going to meet this way very often for much longer. The road trips are definitely going to get fewer responsibilities, marriage. I ace Sid. Maybe you did have a point earlier today. It's not going to be carefree like before. Come on, man. We still have time. We should all go on another trip together soon. Yeah. We should. What's all this? Yeah. Hmm. He's right. All we have is now. Sid, I don't know what you've added to my drink. It's strong as hell. I feel like I'm going to say some real dumb stuff now. But that's what we have, man. Today. That's all we have. Nothing lasts anyway. You know what? We should be cool with that. This is dumb, but you know when I was a kid, I really, really wanted to be someone famous. I think everyone's wanted that at some point, and most people do throughout their lives. It's a great ego boost, but the thought of being forgotten after you're dead? It's really scary. So I wanted to be some kind of sports star, a basketball player maybe, or a musician. They're always remembered and honored after they die. But for how long, and what about the mediocre ones? Is like the average person continuously 
thinking about this dead celebrity. So then I think, well, who's still talked about? And I realized there was religious leaders and politicians, people that have brought about huge changes in the world, like Gandhi, Buddha, Jesus. Dude, I can't be Jesus. And we'll, <laughs> Dude, I can't be Jesus. And will even they be remembered forever? Thousands of years from now, maybe. Millions? If humanity and the planet somehow didn't exist then? I doubt it. Like, time is endless and eventually everything will be forgotten and washed away. There's no point in struggling against that. So the only thing that made sense to me after that was to give up the struggle and forget about all of that. To be okay with being forgotten. And just focus on the present. No past. No future. Now. Like what Rowan said about his diving experience? That's it, man. Man, the thought of forgetting, of being forgotten, that scares the hell out of me. Sorry, I'm drunk. Hi, drunk. I'm Rowan. <laughs> now I feel you, man. I get what you're saying. Thanks, man. Ani, tell us about your moving plans. Aren't you excited? We'll get to that. But first, ice cream. Ice cream! Auntie gets us. So you can gather the plates and keep them in the sink. We'll wash them later. Yeah, mom. Is Sid depressed? Thanks. He's like hanging his head a little bit. Thanks, man. Hey, I'll do it. I got it. Auntie must be excited for tomorrow, nah? What prompted the plan? Since I retired a year ago, I barely had a social life. It gets a little lonely here with Sid having moved out too, which of course is a good move for him. And I'm surrounded by so many memories here. I feel like they hold me back in some ways, all alone thinking about the past. This new place I'm moving to, all my friends live there. It's got all these facilities. Life will be a lot more convenient there, especially as I get older. It's hard to take care of this house mostly by myself. Going into a new apartment will free me up from so many responsibilities, get me closer to my friends. Could be a whole new beginning for me. I have a lot of years left to live. And I want to do the things I've always wanted to do. I have love that, Auntie. I'm so excited for you. That is really cool. Glad you're getting a new start. Hope I'm this enthusiastic about making big changes in my life when I'm older, too. Dude, you'll be coming up with your 10,000 eighth career hobby idea next year. <laughs> Idiots. All right, I'll just clean up. No, Auntie, sit. Sid and I will take care of this, won't we, Sid? I'll make my special coffee and Sid will clean up the plates. Yeah, Mom, don't worry about it. All right, the sugar is in the top left covered in them. Don't worry, Auntie, I've got it. Sid will help me out. You just relax. And just a small cup for me, if that's okay. Okay, so they're gonna go sit in the living room. The end of the night's almost over. Wash the dishes. You found the milk, nah? Yeah, dude, chill. I'm happy for your mom. She's still excited for new adventures in her life and she's found a way to make it happen. I see so many people just drift without a plan after retirement. This is really good for her. I'm moving closer to her friends, amazing for mental health at her age. It's a great move. I hope she has a good time. And I hope you do too, hmm? You've been awfully quiet for a while now. Nothing like that. It's just a stupid book. Is it just that? Yeah, relax. I do hope you get back in your zone soon. If this is what makes you happy, that's what your soul is all about, then that's what matters the most. But if for some reason you can't get back to it, then I hope you can figure out a way to pivot or change into something new. And reinvent yourself if you have to, like your mom. It's just a little creative block, Aish. It's no big deal. Well, I hope that's true. You know yourself best. It'll be cool. That coffee done? Can you carry the coffee? Girl, why am I expected to do everything around here? I don't like this. Here you go, everyone. Thanks, coffee. Mama. 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 Mummy. Okay, sit. Aish, you said you... What's all the commotion downstairs? Are they having a dinner party? Oh no, it's probably flashback to when his dad died. Oh no, it's his dad. And then he just said nothing and walked out the door. Classic. Sid, did we wake you up, kid? No. I heard everyone laughing and I want to sit here too. Oh, come on, join us, big man. He's a cute kid. Yeah, come on, come on. Come here. True, true. Ah, yay. AJ, will you get off your phone? It's Sarah, man. Shh. Leave him be. Look at him. He looks so stressed. Okay, kids. I must go to bed. I have a long day ahead of me tomorrow. You kids stay here as long as you want, okay? Oh, we'll be leaving soon, too, auntie. It was so nice to see you again after so long. Please do come over to the new place, too. Yes, auntie. Of course. Good luck with everything. I'm sure you kids have a lovely future ahead of you. Thanks, auntie. Good night, mom. Good night, Sid. Come on, let's sit in the back garden. I'll wash up the cups. Go ahead. Wow, no one helping me. No one helping me. The audacity. Ethan, what's up? Just saw this on the counter. I'm so glad to see you guys have kept a picture of our families together. All right, dude, there's tons of pictures of our families together. They're just kept in dad's old office, so I haven't seen them in forever. But those are special times, man. You know it. They really were. Credit to your dad. He was the one to make all these plans and get us out there. Uncle was always so full of energy and enthusiasm. It's a good life we had, man. You know, even now. It definitely is. It just becomes routine. We all get used to it. Now, seeing my mom getting older, the house being sold, suddenly that normal everyday life doesn't exist anymore. I totally get what you mean. 
like you said, full of energy and enthusiasm, Alzheimer's completely changed him. He just forgot who I was. I was 14 and that was hard. It's so strange, disorienting, it still is. Oh my god. Now it makes a lot of sense because his dad had early onset Alzheimer's and died when he was still a teenager. I knew his dad died, but the fact that it's like early onset Alzheimer's gives a lot more perspective to why he's got all this anxiety over memories and, and reliving them because he worries that if he doesn't relive them and if he doesn't keep talking about it and bringing it up, he's going to be like his dad and he's going to forget it. That's really sad. I'm almost in tears. I'm trying not to be. I'm I'm a boss bitch. Like, don't don't worry about me. <laughs> Imagine knowing someone you've known all your life who loves you and you love, just not knowing who you are anymore. No emotion towards you, no memories together, no acknowledgement, nothing. Sounds horrible, dude. I'm sorry I wasn't there. It was me who drew it from everything. And of course, after his passing, I did have the best years. I discovered art, music, games, writing. A strange way one led to the other, so I don't know what's good or what's bad and all of this, it just is. And then suddenly that was my new life predictable routine something i love for about 15 years sad beautiful comforting now it's all changing again isn't it so it's a little scary i'm gonna value every damn day of just sitting and like playing my favorite game or just cooking or i don't know watching a movie or football or something because you don't realize how damn temporary those regular days are uh they aren't regular at all damn i never thought about it like that i'm gonna value them too man damn those guys look really engrossed in their discussion let's join them yep come on it's about three years. You're 28 now. Maybe she wants some sort of assurance that things are headed somewhere. I never thought about that. Of course you didn't. You're always living in the moment, aren't you? Sometimes you gotta think about the future, man. Yeah. What's up? Uh, AJ's gonna propose to Sarah. What? Really? What? No, I never said anything about proposing to anyone. We're just gonna talk. Damn, you're growing up too, huh? Shut up. Does it look like we're all growing up and moving on, right? True. I... I think I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give it a shot. I'll move out to the big city, see how it works. No harm in that, right? No, of course. I'm glad you made a decision. Good stuff, dude. Just listening to you guys. We're all falling in love with diving. Aisha moving abroad. AJ getting married. When did I say anything about the M word? And Sid is always opening up to new exciting things. I want to do it too. New Horizons and all that, you know? This is the time. It'll kill it, dude. Thanks, man. We've all got to meet again before we leave. You're the one leaving us first. Party at my place then. The last party. Come on, don't call it that. Sorry. We can have a barbecue or something. We can go down to the beach too. We'll see each other at your wedding, too, if we're invited. You're not. Of course you are. <laughs> and then when Rowan's a pro diver, you can take us all on dry diving trips. It may take some years. I've got a lot to learn. Well, then we'll come after our little families. Fingers crossed. God knows where we'll be or how busy we'll be. It might be years before we see each other. Boo! Nah, come on, dude. We'll make time. 100%. I'm in. I'm all in for these plans. Well, let's go. It's quite late. Yeah, all right. Better get going. Bye. Bye, you guys. It was lovely meeting you. Take care, Aish. We'll see you at the wedding. And the party before that. Don't forget the party. It's happening. And then AJ's wedding. Stop everyone saying I'm getting married. You guys are gonna jinx it, I swear. So you're gonna do it, huh? Sid, good luck with the grant, bud. Oh, shit. You're gonna write now. I gotta forgot about that, man. Me too, dude. Good luck with it. See you guys. Bye. You good? I guess I just hate endings. Things are going to be very different from this point on, and I'm going to miss it. It's the very impermanent of things that makes them beautiful. That's a quote from your own favorite film, man. The perfect blossom is a rare thing. You could spend your life looking for one and would not be a wasted life. That's from the same film. Oh, no. Oh, no. This eyeliner is waterproof. I'm going to be okay. Well, I guess I know you know the question in front of you. Now you just need to decide. Sometimes I wish I had a superpower that could stop time, though. Or... Turn it back and keep it there. Or just let me visit some moments. That wouldn't turn out well at all. I mean, you just take a break. <laughs> oh no, I'm gonna blink. Oh my god, my allergies. <laughs> I'm kidding. You've seen enough movies and stuff to know how that ends. No, you're right. But it did make me think of something for the book. Well, it sounds like your work's calling to you. I can see it on your face as always. Take care now. I'll see you soon, okay? See you, Aish. What do I do? Do I leave? Mom! Oh my god, wait, I can come back inside. But I don't think I can head up the- No, I can. Oh. I'm taking one last look.
Good night, home. Time to work. Oh, so I'm staying the night with my mom. That makes sense. So solid two hours to get this done. Let's see what I can do with the notes I've got. Why won't it start? Don't do this to me now. It's better yet. I just need to plug it in. I forgot to bring the charger. Oh my god, Sid. Bro, I need a laptop. His dad's office. That must be where his dad's office is. Mom's laptop should probably be in. That's how it's got to be, huh? Sid, you have two hours, my man. Oh my god, Sid! <laughs> Sigh. Okay, it's okay. You'll be fine. Sid, go inside. Dad, what are you doing? Hey, bud, I'm working on a new project. Is it difficult? Sometimes, other times, it's the easiest thing in the world. What is it today? Today's one of the good ones. Don't you get bored? It sounds boring. Well, sometimes it is. Some days I just sit here all day and make zero progress, but even those days are important. The important thing is to not get thrown off by it and just try again the next day. Did you take those photos too? I did. How do you do so many different things? It's not difficult when you love doing them. I want to learn too. I'll tell you what. When we go for a hike this weekend, I'll let you handle the camera. Would you like that? Hey, really? Yes, yay, I love hiking. Oh, Sid, I'm sorry. I'm gonna turn up the music on my end. I feel like I need it for this part. Suleiman Al Kabani? I thought his name was Siddharth. Oh, that's someone else. I'm sorry. I'm being stupid. We're flashing through the house. First thing she wants is to get her magical powers. Her wants has changed. It's not her magical powers she wants back. She loves the life she had and she wants everything back as it was, the time period. She wants to return to her simple, blissful life. A life of spending time in nature, taking care of her aunt and uncle, helping the fields or village or neighbors. That's all she wants. All she loves. A beautiful, humble life. And all this is taken away from her during the attack. Her powers, she enjoys them as they are, playing with flowers, making them float and bloom. She has no ambition for greater power. In fact, she wants to specifically avoid that because that is against her initial want of a simple and blissful village life. But this ambition will be thrust upon her in the form of a huge responsibility. Her village is raided. They're looking for her. She's special, one of the last few mages remaining in this world. They want her powers. She has powers beyond her understanding and beyond what she's interested in. Her uncle asks her to leave to save herself. She wants to stay. She loves her village, her family, her old life. She wants to rebuild, but that's impossible. Many are dead or missing, and the village almost destroyed. So she's forced to leave because her life is in danger here. They're after her, and she must run. But more importantly, this is now her goal, which can fulfill her want. Her uncle says she can undo all of this if she wants, once she meets the mage. So now she has these two motivations to take this journey, however much she may want to stay here. So then she meets Beck, and he tells her all about the Old Kingdom. I wrote about the Old Kingdom because it was interesting to have a mysterious past and magical relics in good old times, but this can be connected to everything else. The Old Kingdom was a sort of utopia, a golden age of culture, science, and magic. There were mages, mages like her. They were an integral part of society, loved and respected by all. Their magic helped the kingdom, the secret to the kingdom's progress. They healed, performed scientific experiments, and helped make important decisions. The backbone of progress and peace. The Old Kingdom is going to be very important later. And the stones, it's all connected. Let me see. They use stones to store and distribute the power across the kingdom, kind of like power lines. When the kingdom collapsed, we'll get to know how later. The stones were scattered across the world after the collapse. It's been more than 500 years, but the stones still have a tiny, tiny fraction of their powers. The power is so weak that it's of no use, but they can provide a sort of feeling. Someone close to them just gets a glimpse of pure elation and beauty. That's why Beck is so in love with them. This is also the reason why she keeps getting glimpses and visions of a place she doesn't know. Yes, it's all connected. Oh, because of her necklace. It's made the same stone. It was passed on to her, not sure by who. 
So after the collapse, the world has descended into chaos. Small, isolated, unprotected towns have replaced the kingdom, which was a safe haven for learning and progress. The new world is plagued with disease, lawlessness, and ignorance. The old mage will tell the girl more about the current world state. All right, so that's the stones in the old kingdom, and she wants to find the mage for her own interest. To somehow undo the damage to her village and get back the humble, innocent life she had. Okay, and once she's captured... The enemy that's after her, he's captured the last remaining mages from all across the land. He's trying to scratch a magic from them. That's what he wants from her. Luckily, she escapes. And it's the temple of time she realizes that she hasn't achieved her initial want. Staying here will never undo what happened to her village. She may be safe, but she'll never get back what she wants. Nothing will happen to her because time has paused. She doesn't want it paused. She wants it to go back, so she decides to leave. She had to leave. She wasn't happy. This wasn't bliss. She was stuck in time here. She knew suddenly that she had to move on. This just wasn't natural. She was running away. She might never recover her powers, but at least there was a chance. Here she would only dream of them, and the yearning would never be satisfied. Now that she started questioning it, things started coming back to her. Her uncle. He knew things she didn't. He wanted her to go. She couldn't just abandon everything. The past would never mean anything without a future to allow it. The pull of the temple was strong. In her gut, she must leave. Stop thinking and move. Let's talk to Beck. Beck, get off your ass. Get off your ass. Beck was fast asleep. Beck, wake up. He will not wake by our call. Sleep here cannot be disturbed. We need to leave. You're departing? That is good news. I hope your stay here was restorative. Travels only depart when they are ready to rejoin time. It is a joy to see travelers traveling on. You must have met the knight here as well. He's been with us for many, many would-be years in his time. Maybe his time will come soon. But Beck will alone? No, he is not ready. Will I see him again? No one can answer that. Oh, so she had to leave Beck behind. So she walked into an ambush. She felt herself fading away into the whiteness. I'm surprised we haven't reached the end of the story, to be honest. Ah, oh, you're awake. Come take a seat by the fire and drink some of this. Wow, this is a dope ad. This reminds me of, like, uh, Howl's Moving Cat. No, it doesn't. Never mind. But there's a lot of books. You don't remember? You ambushed a little way out here. Good thing I decided to forage for mushrooms. Quite the coincidence. The white light. Might have overdone it a bit. Who are you? I'm the old mage. Oh, it's ready. It's hot. She just poured that straight into her eye. I'm sorry. It's funny. Okay. Amazing, what is this? I've been working on this brew. I call it tea. You knew I was coming? Of course I did. You have a lot lying ahead of you. You have some important decisions to make. Uncle said you'd be able to help us. He said that you can do it. Fetch me one of my books, would you? Which one? It's a blue one, titled The Complete History of the Old Kingdom. It'll be on the wall behind the bed. Why do you have so many books? Got it. Girl, how- did you climb that up by yourself? Okay. Excellent, you found it. Barely. Open page 128, second paragraph. Can you read that out loud? Backbone of the Old Kingdom's unique administration, creating culture of innovation and progress, safe environment, was the Mages' Guild. Not only a symbol that the citizens of the Old Kingdom looked to, the Mages were healers, performed scientific experiments, pioneered innovations, and also helped the King with important decisions in court. There was a secret formula to Old Kingdom stability safety. It was the presence of the Mages and their understanding of the Old Magic. What well, magic is this? I expect you're familiar with it, or some form of it, but this... Read on now, the next paragraph. The old magic was distributed to empowered the old kingdom by the use of large magical runestones. These were commissioned and maintained by the kingdom. They not only provided an easy reserve of magic to draw from the mages, but they also acted as a beacon for trades and travelers. Their art could be felt from thousands of miles away. They have some power in them. Have in the kingdom. So they were prosperous... We overlooked the need for safeguarding. Once it was known, we were vulnerable. Everyone wanted a peace. Even a kingdom as glorious as ours couldn't withstand a continuous barrage of attacks. The collapse was sudden and swift. A few survivors spread out, starting rural colonies in all cor corners of the land. Only a few mages survived the slaughter, and most went into hiding, living normal lives. It's unclear clear if any remain. Libraries fell into disrepair. With a safe environment for learning gone and the disappearance of the mages, progress in art, science, and culture came to a halt. When the knowledge of the old kingdom was lost, sickness and plague once again became common. Ignorance and superstition became the norm. A lack of structure in society meant evildoers became emboldened, and there came to be widespread lawlessness in the land. 
Trade routes were cut off as road systems collapsed, made unsafe by wandering bandits and mercenaries. The isolation of the new communities meant that different languages and lack of communication led to further ignorance. Runs in your blood. But your uncle saw you playing with magic as a child. He came looking for me. What happened in the kingdom? There are people who would seek to use such powers for their own good. And those are the ones that have caught wind of you and are pursuing you. But what do they want with me? One of the rune stones, the original one from the Old Kingdom, still stands intact to this day. But its location is unknown to anyone that's not a mage. It would seem that they want to know the location of the stone. But I don't know where it is! Having out of visions, glimpses of place, that's the stone. Failing to do that, they would try to extract your magic, to use it for power, to control time. They caught me and imprisoned me and saw others in bodies. Most likely misidentified mages. You're one of the very few remaining ones in the land. The only one, maybe. You're very valuable. How do I stop this? Not me. It would be you. The decision is yours because responsibility lies with you. You now have traveled to the last stone, and there I will use its powers to turn back time one last time. It will return the time when you were but a baby, before the enemy ever began their pursuit. There I will destroy the last stone. No one will be ever able to use its magic. The enemy will never be able to use it for evil, but nor will you be able to use your powers for good. The only magic that will remain in the land will be your old, weakened magic, and the glimpses mm -hmm. felt in the scattered mm -hmm. stones. Your life will be the way it was before, the way you wanted. Your village, your aunt, your uncle, and everything as you knew it will be back. And you will once again be able to spend your days as you wish to, in nature and blissful peace. The cold, misty mornings and the warm sunsets will fill you with the elation they used to do. But you will always have those visions, as you did before, and you will wonder what they are of forever. The visions will call you to greater things, to more power, but you shall never know how to answer them. You do not seek a vision, and you will not find it. Stones scattered across the land will speak of a forgotten past and mysteries lost to time. The rest of society around you will remain directionless and able to use the powers and the magic that you have access to. It will wander aimlessly a hundred or a thousand years more. I understand. I'm ready for this. What decision did you speak of before? On the other hand, you could give up returning the life you want the most. There is another course you could take, one which will rid you of your pursuers, but will not bring you back to your old life. Stone is a reservoir of unimaginable power. It is also, as you've read, a beacon that can guide travelers even from far away. You would touch the stone, draw from it, and use it to unlock your powers, to guide people to a better life. What? If you choose to use the power that sleeps within you, you will take us into a new age of enlightenment. You would raise great libraries, your kingdom becoming a safe place for science, philosophy, and culture. A greater age than even the old kingdom, one built from our learnings and our past mistakes. And the powers you will gain will be so strong that the enemy that pursues you will stand no chance against you. You can spread it, all that joy and that bliss to all the people in your kingdom. You will not have the life that you had before. You will not live in simple bliss. The simple, humble, the humble life of simplicity and innocence that you crave will be lost to you forever. You will be occupied by matters of the people, by your kingdom. It will be your responsibility. It will bring you happiness and satisfaction, a different kind of satisfaction. Maybe nothing can be as pure and blissful as you have, but you can still have happiness. Cyril couldn't comprehend this. This wasn't what she was here for. Powers of the magnitude were the last thing she ever wished for. And yet she had a nagging feeling that she should, cons should consider it. I don't know what's right. I didn't expect to learn this. I didn't expect any of what the last few days have brought me. Why don't you do it instead? I'm much too old. Yeah, damn, girl. Like, he's too old. So she's got to make her decision. I'm skipping through some of the dialogue because we're getting to the end. And I don't think we're going to have enough for, like, another 30 minutes. So sorry about this, folks. And I want to make sure that I get the recording done without it going over time. So sorry about that. Sorry. Sorry. We're going back to where it all began. Going back to the birds, trees, and the sand. Going back. We're going back. Going back in time again. Wow. That's cool. That's dope as hell. The moment was finally here. Time to decide, Cyrodiil. Do I actually get a choice in this? Or is she gonna do what she wants to do? What she truly wants? Oh, I don't know. No, it's crashing! Oh my god. Oh my god, that scared the shit out of me. Are we back in our... Home? Oh my god, dude, you passed out. Wake your ass up, Sin. Sin. 
Sleep well last night? Yeah, I was tired. You had a really busy day. And the application were you able to submit it? Sat for a couple hours after the party and finished it off. It was good. I'm quite satisfied with it. I don't know if it'll win a grant or not, but I did the best I could considering everything. Happy to hear that. Listen, Sid. Salesman agreed verbally, but the contract isn't getting signed until later today. And it wouldn't be very nice to make changes at the last moment, but what you want matters a lot to me. Even more than that, I want you to be happy. We don't have to sell the house if you don't want to. But what about you? You've been looking forward to moving close to your friends for months. You can't afford the apartment without selling this, right? In that case, I wouldn't move. If you visit here more often, maybe live closer and help me with the house, it would be just as good as getting a new place. I and mean, you're attached to this house. I know it inspires you. I know that the memories matter to you. This place holds your dad's soul. It's a connection to him. I don't know why you've avoided coming back here recently, but I know that after yesterday you felt that connection to the house again. If you really want it, it's possible. No. It's time to move on. No, Mom. It's time I moved on. Because that's not fair to her. Because she's saying you would have to move back closer and it's like, lady, you're old and you're sad and your son's friends are going in different directions. It doesn't make sense. You know, I partially hope that my parents aren't like kind of keeping the childhood home that I grew up in out of the idea that maybe there, a bunch of us are going to come back because I'm just like, that's just not going to happen. Like, we're all living, all my friends from high school and I, we're all living in, like, different places and everything. And there's just no way that that's going to happen. House has a lot of wonderful memories, but things have changed. I don't want to keep chasing what doesn't exist anymore. Like you said yesterday, I don't want to become a prisoner of the good times. It's the right thing to do. I'm happy to hear you say that. The moves will be here in about an hour and the buyer will be coming over at 12. Freshen up and come downstairs. Your tea is waiting. Okay? Okay, Mom. Love you, Sid. And it holds memories, but I think that the memories at this point are holding him back to, like, a little extent. Like, he's obsessed with the past and what that brings to him. It was time for a new world. It was the right thing to do. I'll do it. Step up to the stone. Touch it and let its power fill you. Oh my god, girl. Oh my god, girl. I'm sorry. I'm ruining the moment. It's beautiful, though. Wow, that's dope. That's very cool. Is this deer coughing? Oh no, it's eating grass. I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> I was like, what is this deer doing? It looks like it's choking. So she chose to bring a new age of enlightenment to the world. And then the adventures can continue on because honestly, like the way that they were describing her old life, like, oh, you'd have everything you ever wanted, but you're always going to have those visions and you're not going to know what they mean. Like that's depressing as hell. You would not want to go through your life wondering what that's about and not being able to get that magic back. Oh my god, Beck! Hey, Beck. Oh. He grew up. He figured it out, too. Ollie Ali Oxen free. Wow, it's beautiful. And it keeps not responding. Don't crash. Mono no aware. The quietly elated, bittersweet feeling of having been witness to the dazzling circus of life. Is that it? Nope. I'm sorry. This is the world's longest goodbye. This is a Minnesota goodbye, as we say. It's a Minnesota goodbye. Oh, look. Is he older now? Mr. Sid, what do you think? Great view, right? Looks like a really peaceful place to live. 
It is in schools, stores, hospitals, all less than a minute away. I'll have a look if you like. I'll wait for you downstairs. I'm finishing this freaking episode. Wait, this is his house. The, he's coming back to buy his child at home. So, his life wasn't so as black and white as he acted like it was gonna be. Life changes. Done looking around? What do you think? It's a lovely house. I'm not really planning to buy a place, I just want to take a look. I've heard a lot about this area. It's such a nice area, that's true. You have my car if you need anything. Yep, got it here. Thanks for showing me around. Take care now. Bye. Dad! Please go to sleep. Look who's wide awake. I must have taken too long. Excited for the trip today? Let's go, Dad! And his wife. You alright? Of course. Who are you? We don't know. We have no context for her. <laughs> Who is that? No, I'm kidding. Um. They're going on a bike trip. I wonder if they're gonna go diving with Rowan. Or if Rowan's now like into biking now. That'd be funny. That was a very beautiful game. I'm deeply impressed by it. It's very heartfelt and very raw. And Rain Swept felt like this, but this felt even more personal. This really felt like putting your heart on the page. And it really kind of hurts to like read it and play through it at times um just like i was in tears they were literally just shooting the shit and having a good time and i'm sitting here sobbing my little eyes out um it's so amazing i feel like we've all had these kind of moments in our lives where we've at least if you're old enough you've been through these kind of moments where you feel like stuck and you're anxious about the future and you want to live in the past and you can't um oh my god it's me look at me it's me look i'm sorry you can see it's me um and but you feel like you're living in the past a little bit and you want to move forward to the future and sometimes you just feel stuck and i think that especially in your 20s you just feel that and this game captures that perfectly and the way that they kind of talked about like Sid you know being worried about the memories and everything and how Sid was just like oh man my memories you know and you kind of think that would have just been natural by itself because I feel like all of us have been through this point where we're just like oh my god we're not going to get where we need to go and that's scary and that's sad and, um, and, and, like, the, the way that they just added, kind of, the added, sort of, the way that they just sort of tied that into how his dad had died of early onset Alzheimer's was just the additional gut punch I did not know that I needed today. Um, nor can I emotionally withstand it. I'm probably gonna be thinking about this game, like, tonight and probably gonna cry about it, not gonna lie. Um, I'm surprised I pulled myself together because I just wanted to sit here and sob. Um, that's not happening. I cannot sit here and sob. But yeah. Really wonderful game. And as always, I'm deeply excited to see what Frostwood Interactive does next. If you like this game, then, and you haven't played Rainswept, please go play Rainswept. Because Rainswept is a little bit bigger, I would say. This is more of an encapsulated narrative game. It feels like, because Rain Swept is kind of more of like a side scroller. It's like 2D. It's not really 3D um, like this game is. This feels like an exploration to 3D games and the kind of stories that you can tell in a 3D environment. So if you're interested in something that has um, kind of different outcomes that you can do, even more outcomes that you can do, I should say, and like other different kind of stories that you should explore, please pr play Rain Swept. This game was just fabulous too, um, and I highly recommend it. I think that this is 
just perfect for anybody who's kind of at like a different sort of point in their life and they're anxious about the future ahead and it just captures that perfectly and in a beautiful way so um i'm very proud to have been a backer for this game it, sorry that it's taken me so long to get to this one but uh it was definitely worth the wait and it did not disappoint and i hope that you guys agree if you like this video please leave a like it really does help the channel out also consider subscribing and when you subscribe be sure to hit the notifications bell so you get updates on when i upload future episodes without further ado thank you all so 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 much for watching bye I would like to give a very special shout out and thanks to my patrons AceWolf741, Deep Dive Dylan, D Roberts, Brian White, Devil J, Caleb Putnam, Robin Harper, Bob Conway, Cody Webb, and Maticus Sama.